I, I don't even, I don't get to it. Something I gotta get used to is better. Everybody's standing for the reading of the scriptures. scripture I am reading from Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 again Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 one more time Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 yes, say amen if you have it so, wait if you don't For we are God's handiwork, recreated in Jesus Christ, born anew, that we may do those good works which God has predestined for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Amen. Amen. As you remain standing, Father, we thank you for this hour that we've come to share with your people. You're so good and you're so kind. Your presence is already being felt in this room. Holy Spirit, continue to be with us as we preach your word to your people. Father, I need your strength. I need your power. I need you to use me right now. In the name of Jesus. That some soul may be saved. Some soul may be reclaimed back unto you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So, as we continue with our series overcomer uh, this is we're going to be talking about session two or lesson two uh, but I want to just recap on some of what I taught on last week uh, on last week uh, we know that we we discussed with you and tried to instill in you uh, dealing with your identity realizing and recognizing who you are. And we ask the question, who are you? And we have, must remember, we must remember, beloved, we must remember that you and I are created in the image and the likeness of God. And understand something, beloved, that when God, Deacon Pharrell, when he created you, when he created me, uh, he did not have to confer with us to determine uh, our nature or, or should or shouldn't, um, uh, what should or shouldn't be included in what we uh, or what our calling or our direction should be. Yes. He did not have to ask us. He didn't have to come and find out from us. God created us, understand, to bear his image right from the very beginning. Amen? Amen. Before any of us were formed, God, listen, God had a plan for our lives. Yes. He had a plan for our lives. And thank you so much, Adrian, for reading the scripture, but I'm going to read it to you again from Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 from the Amplified Classic Version. The Word of God reads, For we are God's own handiwork, His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God, watch this, predestined or planned beforehand for us taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Do you see this? If the word of God lets us know that God had already preordained how we should live. And the Bible says he planned for us, branded to live what? A good life. A good life that was already prearranged and made ready for us to live. From the very beginning of the foundation of the world, before, before we were even created in form, he had already made plans for us, Andrew, Andrew, for us to have a good life. That's right. That was his plan. But sin had entered into the world. And that kind of altered his plan. But yet still, even though sin sometimes reigns in us, he still has a design and a plan for us to have a great and good life. So we must always remember who we are created in his image and in his what? His likeness. In his image and his likeness. So 
as we get ready to embark upon this second lesson, I'm not going to be before you too long, but there's some things that you need to understand this morning. But when we look at this next clip, I'm going to get, get, get it ready for you. Look at this next clip. Last week we saw how it was that uh, uh, Brother John, okay, was upset because of, uh, you know, the, the, the things that were going on in the town. The factory had closed and uh, people were losing their jobs and people were moving out of town. His football program was gone and uh, the football program was gone, the basketball program was gone, and they, they got a runner that has asthma. They run track. Good Lord, he said he ain't even a track, not a track coach. He said track ain't even a sport, Deacon Ferrell. Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> I think I need to mention there's a spoiler alert here in case you had not seen the movie Overcomer. I'm sorry to tell you, but we're going to be showing you some clips from it, all right? And for the sake of us not getting sued, I'm just going to be make a play. We will not be recording the clip, but we will uh, be reviewing it, but it won't be recorded, all right? But so we get to this part where... Now, bro, man is kind of, uh, he's upset. Yeah. He's upset, Joey, and uh, we're going to look at this, but you got to be careful. you got to be careful how um, you behave yourself when you find yourself in, watch this, in unexpected circumstances. Run it for me. Beloved, in difficult circumstances are routine occurrences in life. When calamities come, watch this, your response can expose the real you. When calamities come, your response can expose the real you. Now he's, here it is, John forgets that it's not just him that's affected. It's his wife and his children that are affected. And yet still, whatever's happening to him, he's taking it out on everybody. Right. I'm talking to somebody this morning. What they do not show in this clip is that while he's going on his tyrant, his son, his youngest son is watching 
how he's talking to his mother. We must be so very careful, beloved, that the circumstances that we find ourselves in, that listen, it affects everybody that's involved. Anybody that's connected to us, we got to be so very, especially us men. Can I talk to us for a minute, brothers? Because we explode over everything that don't go up. See, we think that because we're the man, Adrian, that we got to control, we got to control everything. God is the one that's in control. We got to realize that and learn how to submit to his will over our lives. Amen. We can't control everything. Some things are out of our control. All right. I don't, have you ever, Jordan, have you ever gotten a flat unexpectedly? I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm just talking. Uh, you know, I, 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 my wife, she said, I used to be real bad. I mean, real, real bad. You know, when I, if things happen. Things, life happens, Joe. I can't control life. But when things happen, I used to, woo we, I used to have a, ooh, a bad temper. Bad. It, 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 I, now, can I just be honest? Sometimes that old man pastor still wants to rise up. Yes. Talk to me, Deacon S. Pharrell. <laughs> Yesterday, she was with me. Thank God for somebody that's, you got to always have somebody with you that will balance you out. That's right. That's right. Help me somebody. That's right. Because yesterday we had a meeting and thank God that she was there because if she had not been there, I don't know how I would have reacted to what was going on. But she looked at me and I looked at her and I, I can feel her saying, it's okay, Pastor, it's okay. <laughs> Amen. I'm just being honest. Uh -huh. Things that we can't control. Did you say we just need to let it go and say, God, you got control of this. Yes. But have you ever lived out a flat? And here it is, you saying things to the tire. <laughs> Hello, somebody. This is an admin object. It cannot respond to you, not one bit. And then watch this. And if you call Jordan Taylor after you got the flat, now you fussing at him. He ain't got nothing to do. Matter of fact, he's coming to help you. Y'all don't want to say that to me this morning. Then you take it out on the folk that are trying to help you out. John, listen, the situation that took place in this town and in this clip, it ain't got nothing to do with nothing. That's part of life. But now the circumstance, he has to be broken. And many of us in life, we got to be broken in order for God to get us to the place that he wants us to be. Because the reason why this man was upset is because his plan has all out of whack. All right. He had a plan of going back to the championship and winning a title for the school. His plan was to do this, but God said, I've got another direction for you to go in. Right. Man, if you're getting upset because your plans are now topsy-turvy, but you need to take time and say, God, what's your plan for my life? I need to be broken, and that's what he needs to do with the many of us, is to break us in order to get us to where he wants for us to be. Yeah. Preach Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Circumstances. Circumstances. But you got to understand, beloved, the way that we react to adversity, again, often reveals something about our nature. But understand, some circumstances, beloved, are created opportunities for us to grow. Some circumstances that are created are created for, for us to grow. Circumstances have a way of, watch this Marcel, circumventing our best laid plans. And that word circumventing means finding a way around. So circumstances have a way of finding their way around of making or changing our best laid plans. There will always be times in our lives that in order, in order, watch this, that in order for God to get us to the place of surrender, he has to break us. He has to get us out of our comfort zone. Can I talk to you this morning? I did a little research. I did a little research. In, uh, research on the bald eagle. And the nesting or how they create their nest. I found out, Pastor Adams, that when an eagle makes a nest for her eggs, 
She makes layers in the nest. The first part of the nest, Andrew, is filled with thorns. Rough and sharp rocks. That's at the base of the nest. And then what she does on the top of the nest is put some smooth, some feathers, some grass or whatever on top of the thorns. And she places the eggs, the unborn egg, on top of the soft stuff. And then when the eggs are hatched, they have a soft place to lay. Watch this. But then there comes a time, Wendy, when the mother realizes that it's time for my children to leave the nest. They've been living comfortable in their comfort zone long enough. They can't stay. They won't fly if they stay comfortable. Y'all not getting this this morning. So what that eagle, what the mother eagle does is she stirs up the nest where the thorns were at the bottom. Now she's taking the soft stuff away and creates a, an atmosphere for the thorns to start sticking up, to start sticking that, that little eaglet. And all this, listen, this is too rough for me. I got to get up. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I got to. I got to move on. Right. Many of you, many of you, listen. You have been living comfortable for so long, but now the Lord has said it's time for you, my child, to fly. And in order for you to fly, I got to stir up some stuff. God don't want to talk to me this morning. That's gonna make you uncomfortable and get you out of your comfort zone. That's right. Amen. So don't look at your circumstance. As something that's an obstacle. Look at your circumstance as a way of you growing. As a way, watch it, a way whoo, hallelujah. A way of you spreading your wings. Amen. My God. Because watch this. Huh. You ever notice eagles? They fly higher than other birds. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this is some good stuff, Taylor. Eagles, hey, listen, watch this. Janae, eagles don't fly with just any old body. Uh, eagles, you don't see eagles flying with ducks. No, you don't. You don't see eagles flying with pigeons. Eh, they only fly with their own kind because their own kind can only go to the elevation. Help me, Holy Spirit. And sometimes, you ever notice eagles? Uh, they know how to adjust to the wind verification. You ever notice the eagle hit, hit that flip, pop, one time? And then they just spread their wings out. And then just... The wind is there. The wind is... Listen, all the other birds, they doing all of this. They got to get to the low ground because they can't stand the high altitude. But an eagle will go up higher. Stop evading the wind, but go up into the wind so God can take your wings and let you fly. Preach Holy Spirit. So let's, 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 let's. Look, let me give you this. Uh, there's some things that, listen, God wants to change in your lives. There's some plans that he wants to fulfill in your lives. Uh, but you got to understand something. Look at Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13, from the English Standard Version. Thank you, sir. Jeremiah chapter 2, from the English Standard Version, verse 13, and the Word of God reads, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Get this. The Word of God comes through the prophet and says, For my people have committed two evils. They're forsaking me, all right? The fountain of living waters and hewed out systems for themselves, broken systems that can... Jeremiah warns that God's people, listen, they were trying to quench their cravings for salvation in wrong places. And in them doing so, beloved, the Bible says that they committed two evils. The first one was that they turned away from the only true source of living water. They turned away from the only true source of living water. See, a lot of times we think our sources come from other places. Mm. Uh, but you got to understand something because if the truth be told, sometimes, Wendy, 
some of those sources that we think are are there and plentiful all the time sometimes will dry up. Help me, Holy Spirit. And then can I take this a little further? Because the prophet Elijah, when God told him to go by the book of Cherish, amen, he said, I'm going to cause a raven to come and feed you, and I'm going to let you sit by that brook and be nourished. But the Bible lets us know that sooner or later that brook dried up. Yes, it did. See, because sometimes, listen, just like the prophet, we get comfortable where we are. And God has to allow some resources to dry up in order for him to take you to the next level that he wants you to go to. There's only one living source of living water, and that is Jesus Christ. We have become too complacent and dependent upon people. Instead of being complacent and content in what God has done and provides for us. Help me, Holy Spirit. Second, he says, turn away from the only true source. And then secondly, the Bible says, watch this, they have made themselves out to be systems. And not just systems, but broken systems. And what is a system, Pastor? I'm glad you asked the question. A system is a well. It's a well. It's a holding. It's a, it's a pot, if you will, that holds water. But the Bible says, the prophet says, you're a system that can't even hold water. You're broken. You can't hold a thing. Jesus says, watch this in John chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Get this. Jesus said, he talking to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Yeah. You remember that story when Jesus yeah. goes to the well and the Bible says, I have need to go. Jesus, I got need. To, there's a reason I need to go to Samaria because there's a meeting that I need to take place. Mm-hmm. Help me, Holy Spirit. You went, you went to Puerto Rico and you had need to get to Puerto Rico because there was a meeting that needed to take place. Mm-hmm. Jesus said, I got to get to Samaria. Because there's a woman that's going to be there, and I got to talk to her. Hello. Uh-huh. He talks to her by the way. Yeah. Knowing everything, can I help you this morning? Because don't you understand that Jesus knows everything about you? Yeah. God knows everything about you. Mm-hmm. She came out, the Bible says she came out. I want to talk to you this morning. She came out during the daytime mm-hmm. when it was too hot. Mm-hmm. Why? Because she had something to hide. Mm-hmm. She didn't want everybody else, because everybody else in town thought they knew about it. Isn't that something how people want to, you know, just just look at you how you used to be? Mm-hmm. Come on. They remember, oh, they remember Lynn how very well how you used to be. Mm-hmm. They only hear that you go to church, you what? You do who? You you deacon who? What? <laughs> it wasn't too long ago. Matter of fact, it was just a couple months ago that you and I was out at the uh, at the, the, the nasty king. I don't know what that is, but I just thought it. And now you talking about you say? Can I say something to you, beloved? Listen, don't you dare allow a demon, help me this morning, to diminish your salvation. Don't you dare allow a demon to discredit your salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he talks to this woman And in John chapter 4 verse 13 Jesus said to her Everyone who drinks of this water will what? Thirst again Well whoever drinks of the water that I Will give him will never be thirsty again The water that I give him Will become in him a spring of living Welling Living water, a spring of water Welling up to eternal life Y'all see this? So we talk about being broken We talk about having an attitude when God wants to redirect your direction. So when we look at Jonah, if we look at Jonah, and I'm, I'm going to incorporate a Deaconess, uh, uh, Deaconess of Training, uh, Ujale, she's going to help me read. Amen. I'm going to, I'm going to ask that Deja, she's going to come up here, she's going to help me read. It's going to put up on the screen. Just come on up. Come on up. I want to ask Taylor to come on up and help me read. Amen. Amen. Just, just come on up over here. Some of y'all come up over here. Because I want y'all to read this for yourself. I want you to see this for yourself. We're going to put it up on the screen, but I need for them to read it aloud to you. But I just want to set the ground. Let's, let's just set this up. In Jonah chapter 1 and 2. Jonah chapter 1. In Jonah chapter 1, uh, the word of the Lord comes to Jonah. He tells Jonah to go down to Nineveh, this great city. All right? Can I help you understand this? He t- God says they're great already. Even though they were, weren't living the way God wanted them to live, they were still great. Janae, they were still great. God says, God says to them, watch this. He says to, he says to Jonah, he said, I want you to go down uh, to, 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 uh, to, to Nineveh, the great, that great city, and cry out against it, 
for their wickedness has come up before me. That lets me know, Jordan, and I don't care what we do, God still loves us. Even in the state that we're in, he still loves us. He still sees, watch this, he still sees greatness in you. He still sees greatness. That's why he sends men and women of God to come into your life to preach the word of God in order for you to turn from your wicked ways. He tells the prophet, he tells Jonah, he says, listen, go, preach to the city, this great city, tell them to turn from their wicked ways, right? Jonah decides, nah, not going to do it. They don't deserve your grace. Who in the world is he? I'm not going to, I'm going to go in an opposite direction. Don't you understand, beloved, that when God gives you a directive, you cannot run from the assignment that he's placed over your life. <laughs> so he tells them, he's Jonah, I mean, Jonah goes and he thinks he's going to get away. He gets in a ship. And, and uh, y'all know read the story of the ship that goes into a storm. Jonah's in the ship sleep. Uh, and the men on the ship, they, you know, they wake him up and say, look, man, we got trouble. Why are you sleeping in the midst of the storm? Get up and pray to your God. We don't pray to our God. Get up and pray to your God. And, you know, yeah, they ask who you're from and all this kind of stuff. And, and he tells them who he is. And, and finally, Jonah tells them, listen, the reason why this storm has occurred is because of me. And I start right speaking this for real. Sometimes we bring our families in the storms because of our disobedience. Oh, man. <laughs> Those of us that are in leadership, pastors and teachers and prophets and apostles and bishops, sometimes we bring storms upon the people of God because of our disobedience. That's good. Get that for me. Amen. Because of disobedience. The reason why these other people were in trouble was because the man of God would not listen. He would not listen. Whew. So Jonah says, listen, I'm the one. Throw me overboard and everything will be fine. They said, no, we're gonna, we don't want to do that to you, man. Uh, you seem like a nice cat. Uh, we're not going to throw you overboard. Let's, let's, but they could They couldn't do it. When they finally threw him overboard, the Bible lets us know that immediately the storm stopped and everything was good. And Get this. Adrian, the Bible says God prepared a great fish. He's going to get your attention one way or another. Sure prepared a great fish to come and swallow him up. And the Bible says that Jonah was in that fish for three days. Three days. Jesus. I, I, I don't have time to really delve into it, but that wasn't a pretty place to be in. Mm -hmm. Think about it for a minute. Think about it. Think about it, Tate. In the belly of a fish. A belly of a fish that's in the water. Whatever that fishy is coming in that fish's mouth and then into that belly. It's dark. It's stank. Think about it. All because, all because of your disobedience. Now you find yourself in a dark and stank place. Come on. And it's not until Jonah decided in that dark, he gives you another opportunity, Angel. Even in that dark place, the Bible said Jonah prayed to God. Oh my Jesus, who am I talking to this morning? Come on. Somebody needs to hear this because he's breaking you. And right where you are to be broken, he wants you to pray to him right there in that dark place. And the Bible says that when he prayed and decided I'm going to do what God says, then the Bible says God caused that fish to vomit him out where he needed to be. Okay. So he gets to Nineveh. He preaches to the city. And God decides to save the city. But the man of God didn't want that. What sense does that make? Here it is, you love God, you're the lover of God, but you don't want to see God's people saved? That's stupid! But the man of God had to be broken. Read for me chapter 3. No, come on. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. This time, Jonah obeyed the Lord's commands and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, 
they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and sat on a heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds and flocks, may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear gar garments of mourning, and everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. When God saw what they had done, and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the dest destruction he had threatened. Okay, start right there. Pass that right there. Okay. So listen, so, so it was the word of God, get this, it was the word of God from the man of God that saved God's people. Are y'all seeing this? It was God's word, even through a disobedient man of God, that caused an entire nation in a great city to change their lives. Not just the city, but even those that are ahead of the city. Y'all missing this? Can I say it again? The word of God came from the man of God. And because that word of God came from the man of God to that city, not only was the city spared to stay, but the head was saved as well. He realized his faults. Y'all missing this. Can I take it a little step further? Yeah. Look at me, camera. Look at me, camera. Look at me, camera. <laughs> President Trump, even you, if you hear and listen to the word of God and stop being hard-headed and deceitful, even you can turn your life over to Christ. Uh, amen. You can look at everybody else now. Amen. See, I'm not afraid. I don't, if you like him, that's fine. Somebody says something real profound at the barbershop. Watch this. Our president is a great businessman, but he's an awful president. That's it. Mm -hmm. Awful, wonderful businessman. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to leading the nation, he ain't that great. Mm -hmm. But it takes a man or woman of God that's going to be obedient to spread the gospel. Because, God, listen, not only him, but the entire nation needs to be delivered. Amen. Help me, Holy Spirit. Amen. The entire nation needs to be delivered. White House, Senate, Congressmen, Congresswomen, it don't matter. All of us. And it comes through the what? The preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what saves men and women. So he preaches. Come on, Jordan, let's go to chapter 4 of Nineveh, please. You want to start for me? This change of plans greatly upset Jonah, and he became very angry. So he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I ran away to Tarish. I knew that you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen. The Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry about this? Then Jonah went out to the east side of the city and made a shelter to sit under as he waited to see what would happen to the city. And the Lord God arranged for a leafy plant to grow there. And soon it spread its broad leaves over Jonah's head, shading him from the sun. This eased his discomfort, and Jonah was very grateful for the plant. But God also arranged for a worm the next morning to dawn the worm at dawn the worm ate through the stem of the plant so that it withered away and as the sun grew hot God arranged for a scorching east wind to blow on Jonah the sun beat down on his head until he grew faint and wished to die death is certainly better than living like this he exclaimed then God said to Jonah is it right for you to be angry because the plant died Yes, Jonah retorted, even angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you feel sorry about the plant, though you did nothing to put it there. It came quickly and died quickly. 
but Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness and to the mention of all and not to the mention of all the animals should not feel sorry for such a great city go back go back for me uh, in the scriptures please real quick go back one more all right y'all can sit down thank you Stick, leave it right there leave it right there put me on that put me on that half screen half you know how y'all do it all right so the word of god says look at this there you go right there yeah so watch this the lord arranged for a leafy plant to grow there Soon it spread its broad leaves over Jonah's head, shading him from the sun. This eased his discomfort, and Jonah, give me a little more, was very grateful for the plant. Now here it is. Here it is. He was leave it there for me. Don't go nowhere, but give me some more words, please. Too. He was disobedient, but yet God blessed him. He was in discomfort because of the sun and the heat. Here it is. You want to die. But God said, I'm going to let you live. Why? Because I got to break you. I'm going to break you. But I'm going to still bless you while I'm breaking you. I'm going to cover you, but I'm going to still break you. Now listen. I'm going to give you what you need, but I'm going to still, I'm going to make you do what I need for you to do. But I'm going to break you, but I'm going to comfort you. He put a leaf over him. Cause the leaf to grow up and cover him up. Cover him up. But God, listen, here it is. The same way that he prepared a fish, he prepared a worm as well. So, okay, you've been comfortable long enough. I done gave you what you needed for a little while, but I'm going to cause this worm to eat up your comfort. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. There's some things that God is sending your way that's going to eat up your comfort. Because, listen, I'm breaking you. I need for you to do what I need for you to do. So I need to break you. Somebody needs to be broken today. Amen. I don't know who's watching me this morning, Amen. but you need to be broken. So listen to this. Next morning at dawn, the worm ate through the stem of the plant so that it withered. It ate through to the root. It ain't, it ain't the, the leafy part. Because guess what? If it had just that the leafy part, if it had stayed there a little while longer, the leaf would have grown back up. Uh -huh. But it ate through to the root, to the source. Y'all not hear me this morning. Right. Of your comfort. Eight through and withered the stem. Give me eight, verse eight. And as the sun grew hot, God arranged for a scorching wind to blow on Jonah. The sun beat down on his head until he grew faint and wished to die. Death is certainly better than living like this, he exclaimed. And God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry because the plant died? The man of God said, Yeah! Even angry enough to die? Give me verse 10. The Lord said, you feel sorry about a plant? Get this. Though you did nothing to put it there, I came quickly and it died. And, di and died quickly. It came quickly and died quickly. But Nineveh has over 120,000 souls living in spiritual darkness. And not, mention all, not to mention all animals. Shouldn't they? Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? He had to break Jonah. That, and that's the end of the book. That's the end of Jonah. In the, in the, that we hear about Jonah. But here it is. You, he had more concern about a leaf that died than about souls that would be saved. That's living. The Bible said living in spiritual darkness. The Lord says some of you worry about the wrong thing. And you need to be concerned about souls that are living in spiritual darkness. You worried about your appearance. You worried about what people are saying about you. Instead of worrying about the, you're worried about the wrong thing. There are people that are dying spiritually. But you worried about your appearance. But listen, the word to, to you this morning is: there's a time for us to be broken. There's a time for us to be broken because there's work for you to do. He's getting you out of your comfort zone. Because there's something else that he needs for you to do. Something that you don't even, you never intended that you would be able to do. Just like the man in the story. He never intended to be in that place. And circumstances has, has thrown him a curve, if you will. And he's not prepared for it. But the Lord has sent me here today to let you know, get prepared for it. Get prepared for it because, watch this. I don't know what's going to happen to you in your, in your job employment. I don't know if it's already happened. 
But God said, don't worry about it. Because I got you. Because there's an assignment on your life. Things happen for a reason in your life. But you were faithful. And he's seen that you need to be here instead of being there. He directed your life for his purpose. And that's what we got to understand, Joe. Our lives are not our lives. They belong to the Lord. So whatever direction you want, we ought to be praying, Father, whatever direction you want me to go in, I'm willing to go. And sometimes the direction he wants us to go is not comfortable. He's stirring up that mess. To get you to fly. To get you to fly in the altitude and the place and the presence of him. To not just fly, but soar. Fully rely on God, it's time for us to soar. It's time for us to soar. With the remnant, it's time for us to soar because he's, I, tell, I was talking to Deacon S. yesterday, he's preparing us. I keep saying that he's preparing us. He's preparing his people. Your faithfulness to God is what's most important. Amen. Your faithfulness to God is, I'm talking to somebody this morning, your faithfulness to God is what's most important. You can't be lackadaisical when it comes to your worship and your praise. You can't be lackadaisical when it comes, because guess what? Let's be truthful. How many times are you going to sit, you sit at home on Sunday and you actually going to watch this online? Come on now. It's Sunday, Jordan. It's a day of rest, Pastor. <laughs> I'm going to throw scripture in there real quick, Doc. And you're going to sit there and really, you're going to watch it and pay attention? Mm. We, can't, we can't watch Hogan's Hero, a good, good, good five minutes of Hogan's Hero without falling asleep. If so, anybody know Hogan's Hero? It's something about that first, that, that first, you know, when it first come on, you know, it's just something about, ooh, Lord. Ooh. <laughs> we don't even get to hear soap say, I see nothing. <laughs> and I'm out. And yes, so you're going to pay attention. <laughs> Sitting there with your computer in front of you, I doubt it. It's important. But understand, beloved, he's breaking us. He's breaking me. There's more than for me to do for the kingdom of God. There's more for this ministry to do for the kingdom of God. I pray right now for those of you that are watching, mm, my God, that you heard God this morning. That you heard him talk to you this morning about breaking in. About the circumstances that you're experiencing. That those circumstances have come to grow you, not to tear you down. For you to be an encouragement and a blessing to someone that's in spiritual darkness. Perhaps you're in spiritual darkness this morning. But understand, he wants you to come into the marvelous light. Amen. This is my prayer for each and every one of you that are viewing us this morning. Thank you again for sharing with us. And I pray that if you're watching today, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, I want to extend to you the invitation, a personal invitation to give to you, to accept them into your life. And if you don't mind praying with this prayer with me, just say, Father, in Jesus' name, I realize that I'm a sinner. But Father, I need Jesus in my life. So right now, won't you come into my life and come into my heart? I surrender by all of my will to you. And I thank you for saving me this day. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer, we welcome you. To the household of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And let me extend one more invitation to you. If you're in the Great Atlanta area, or if you just happen to be visiting, come on by 1445 Municipal Parkway. We'd love to have you come into fellowship and share with us in one of our live worship services. We appreciate you so, so very much. We don't take your watching for granted. Meet us on this coming Wednesday right here on our uh, Facebook page or on our website at www.fullerylicm.com as we come and minister and teach the Word of God on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We love you. We appreciate you so much. Have a prosperous, productive, and powerful day. And always remember to fully rely on God.